Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 17th, 2018. This first story is from CNET.com. SpaceX's first internet satellites are set to launch Sunday. If you are watching this TDD report, I typically post uh, between 11 and 1 o'clock on Sunday, and it will have already launched. It's scheduled for 6.16 a.m. Pacific Time. That would be 8.16 Chicago Time, 9.16 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So it will have already launched, hopefully, and launched successfully. So Elon Musk's co rocket company has been working on getting satellite broadband off the ground for years. Now the Falcon 9 is set to launch the first test. On Sunday, a week after launching its huge Falcon Heavy space rocket, which, by the way, I talked about last week in the last report. This will probably be, by the way, too, this will probably be my last report unless anything significantly happens for a while. I'll switch to a different subject, but I thought this was important enough to talk about. But SpaceX is set to blast off another test of a long-awaited project. Uh, more than three years ago, we learned from Elon Musk that his rocket company were, was working on developing satellites to provide low-cost Internet access around the world. So they're launching two test satellites to see how this works out. They haven't really been forthcoming about the information, but by exploring some of the permits issued by the FCC, they've been able to kind of track this down, and then I guess after that they got them to kind of admit to it. So um, the letter from the FCC refers to two satellites called Microsat 2A and Microsat 2B that will be launched as a secondary payload on the PAWS mission. The FCC granted SpaceX a license in November to launch this pair of satellites as part of a test mission. In its application, the Sunday described the test objectives in addition to providing, uh, uh, proving out the development of the satellite bus and related subsystem. The test program for the Microsat 2A and 2B spacecraft will also validate the design of a phased array broadband antenna communications platform. The th thing about this is this has an end game to it. Elon Musk is thinking if this is successful and he can get low broadcast, you know, uh, low cost broadband all over the world via satellites. Uh, he can use that to actually finance the Mars missions on his own. Wouldn't that be something if he actually was using the NASA facilities and stuff like that, but paid for the Mars mission all from uh, profits from his Internet uh, company and becoming an Internet service provider? That would be kind of cool. In fact, I'll read from it right here. SpaceX hopes to have its global Internet service up and running by the middle of the 2020s. Other public filings have revealed that the company hopes revenue from becoming an ISP could help fund its vision of a Mars colony. So... That would be kind of cool if NASA doesn't get on board and go with it, or maybe they could do a partnership or something. But it's nice to think that he's got a plan in the works that, hey, NASA, if you're not going to come along for the thing, we'll do it ourselves. So that's kind of cool. This next one is from IFL Science. Scientists reverse Alzheimer's disease in mice. Alzheimer's disease is a slow, tragic blight of the brain, a disorder that in intrudes upon a patient's identity and fundamentally changes who they are. The condition is chronic and at this point incurable. Now researchers report that a mice rid of uh, let's see, that a mice rid of specific enzymes show signs of Alzheimer's reversal. Their amyloid plaques melted away, cognition improved, and their synaptic function was partially restored. This is really the way they wrote this was really kind of weird, grammatically at least. Now researchers report that the mice rid of a specific enzyme show signs of Alzheimer's reversal. To our knowledge, this is the first observation of such a dramatic reversal of amyloid deposition in any study of Alzheimer's disease mouse models, says researcher Requeg, and I don't even, I'm slaughtering this probably, Requeg Lgan from the Cleveland Clinic Learner Research Institute. The enzyme in question is called beta secretase base 1. Its role, however, is not as straightforward as it may seem the critical chunk of research published in the Journal of Experimental Medicine is not exactly in base one's import, importance, but in the, this is just really the way this is, basically I'll just put it in my own words. What they're saying is just because of the fact that they rid this um, amylized base does not mean they, they're curing the effects of what causes the Alzheimer's disease too. They're just kind of able to reverse it. And you also have to take in effect that this is just from mice. So um, yeah, you can say that um, they did it with mice, but this isn't even the first time they did that. This is the second time that uh, it says, in fact, in, if you read to the end of the study, they say, however, the study makes no claim of such success in humans as far as curing the Alzheimer's disease. In fact, scientists have cured Alzheimer's disease before in mice without replicating the results in patients. Instead, the hope lies in pointing research to drugs that could mimic a similar process in humans. So they're going to use this as a base to kind of test drugs that could uh, get rid of this um, 
you know, coating that your your brain gets and, re and reverse the plaque coating in the brain and maybe use it for that purpose too. Or maybe they will get lucky and maybe as a patient treatment it will actually reverse the disease. But um, don't count on this as being a cure just because it's a cure for Alzheimer's and mice that it's going to be a, a cure for humans because we've been down that road before and it didn't end up being that way. I'm surprised by now with this article um, being out for a, a few days like it has been that they haven't plastered it all over the uh, Facebook that people, you know, people saying they they found a cure for Alzheimer's disease. The way these uh, news reports can over dramatize things. So, I had a little bit lighter story for the last story of this week. Um, this is from uh, newswpxi.com. Apple employees keep walking into glass at the new Apple Park campus. Um, you can look at some of the pictures in the article here, and as usual, all the links to all the articles I'm talking about will be in the description below. But it says the glass walls surrounding Apple's new Apple Park campus in Cupertino, California, are so clear that employees are actually smacking into them and hurting themselves. According to MarketWatch, the current the company has even had to call emergency services to help multiple employees, some of whom suffered minor cuts to the head. So they're not just walking into it; they're banging into it quite a uh, forcefully, I guess. While the issue may seem humorous, there are workplace regulations that Apple could be violating. The site noted, for example. California Labor Code states that employees should be protected against the hazard of walking through glass by barriers or by conspicuous durable markings. The Apple headquarters feature 45 foot tall and curved panels of safety glass according to uh, time. Some staffers started to stick post-it notes on the glass doors and but were asked to remove them because they detracted from the building's design. Yeah, I could see kind of where bosses would get off of that but you know for safety reasons I guess if people are banging into it. Yellow post-it notes are at least kind of visible. I'm just wondering why they're not paying attention so much that they would walk into the glass in the first place. But I don't know. What do I know? I'm not there. Maybe it's really that clear. Maybe they keep it that clear and that clean that you could actually do that. Another person familiar with the situation told Time there are other markings on the panels to identify the glass. Uh, I don't specifically in these pictures of it. It does not look like there's any markings that I can see, but these are far off pictures, so I don't really know. According to The Verge, this wouldn't be the first time the company got in trouble for putting its architectural vision before prioritized safety. In 2012, an 83-year-old woman sued Apple after walking to a clear door at an Apple store and breaking her nose. Uh, I think I did read that article, too. They've been posting that article around, and there was a settlement, but I don't know how it worked because they said the financial, uh, the out-of-court settlement that the woman received did not result in any um, financial payments by Apple themselves, so... I don't know if that means maybe the maybe they were leasing the building or something, and maybe the whoever owned the building or something like that, their insurance company settled the lawsuit or something. Didn't really get any detail on that. So last year, Wired magazine called the structure a statement of openness of free movement. In 2011, Apple co-founder Steve Jobs called the vision a little like a spaceship landed. I mean, it is impressive to look at and everything. So I still don't really understand why why are people walking into the glass, you know, are they paying attention to something else? When they, I even made a little joke on Facebook. I little, I put a little joke underneath uh, when people were posting about this uh, article and said, yeah, the, the first uh, few hours that uh, the Apple employees couldn't actually get in the building because they were pushing uh, on the doors when it said pull. So about half of them weren't making it into work the first day. That's kind of what I put in one of the uh, comments. Just, just as a joke, uh, that didn't really happen. That was just my joke that I added. So. Anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week. Oh, and by the way, let me give credit where credit is due to down in the description below. The very first article about SpaceX was sent in by um, Brian D., my friend Brian D., so I want to give credit where credit's due, and that will be down in the description below. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.